So I'm, I'm presenting for Blue Horizon, with the, which is a project of IBM. I'm Henning Dietrich. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, this is a project that is as a rare case for IBM, a research project that has only internal proof of concepts, where we do not work with a customer yet at this point, but uh, we have decided to put something together that demonstrates, among other things, the power of the blockchain. And it is, um, at this point, probably uh, one of the most exciting uh, real hands-on um, projects that will evolve into a product very soon. Um, people are very excited about it. When I first heard about it, I, I didn't really understand what it should be in the first place. And this is, this is basically how it reads. Um, what it's all about is basically saying, okay, we are finding a different way than shipping gazillions of bytes to the clouds to analyze it there, but instead shipping the functionality towards um, the sensors at the edge. And this is how our project in the mostly looks these days. There's a Raspberry Pi, and everybody who likes playing around is invited to take part in the project that we're setting up. In this moment, it's, it's actually it's still an internal thing, but you can go to the website that I will post. It's called um, bluehorizon.network, and you can hook up your Raspberry Pi and take part in it. So the focus of this project is the amount of data at the edge that is currently wasted, basically. You have uh, huge amounts of data that is losing its value within milliseconds because a new data point is coming in. So either you analyze it really upfront at the edge or you throw it away. Now, analytics at the edge doesn't really mean like you push all the functionality right at the center, but you put it close to the edge where you have some facility to analyze, where you have the possibility to actually um, do some computing that is meaningful. IBM has come up um, more than a year ago with a very influential paper that's called Device Democracy. And that paper basically um, makes the point that for people to tolerate devices around them to become more and more intelligent and more and more wired up, the situation like we have it today, where basically the manufacturers own the devices and can do with the devices whatever they want to, <coughs> like Vinay just uh, made the case for uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, in his words, uh, you, could, you could today say similar things about vendors that are basically running a business model that is highly centralized and that puts a lot of power in their hand, but also makes them the nexus of whatever happens um, with the data if the government needs it. So the point of the device democracy was basically that the devices themselves should own themselves, or at least the owners of the devices, the actual users of the devices should own the devices. And for that, we would need to have a new kind of infrastructure that is less centralized than what we have today. There was uh, research done, and uh, what turned out is that a truly decentralized IoT would have to have four foundational functions. And for one, you would have to have trustless peer-to-peer -peer messaging. For that, we are using, since a while now at IBM, uh, with some success, Telehash. That was part of the first project that was using this kind of approach, ADAPT. And that's also part of Blue Horizon. Then you would have to have a kind of distributed file sharing mechanism. For that also, both an ADAPT and in Blue Horizon, we're using BitTorrent. This is used to actually ship the data around. Then you want to have some part that does autonomous device coordination. Basically allows you to discover devices that don't know about each other, and that allows you to have negotiations and then an agreement between devices that are machines that are not going to have any reputation or sense of honor, but just mm -hmm. rules. So you would have to have some mechanism that allows you to have contracts and a trust and environment. And this is, of course, where the blockchain comes in. And lastly, that's also very important. Um, you have to have a sense of identity. And the interesting part with blockchain is that 
the identity that we have established, for example, if we make a Bitcoin transaction, is exactly the opposite kind of identity than what the government likes to have when it asks for um, anti-money laundering information or know your customer uh, information. Because what you have in your hands, if you have a key that allows you, that gives you the agency to transfer, for example, digital currency, that is the agency part of identity. While what the government wants to have is basically the recognition or persecution part where you can be held responsible for what you do after the fact. Now that's, that's a whole uh, discussion where I'm taking part in a research project at Koala, which are, who are also doing workshops around the world, um, to find out how regulations can be and, and law can be reconciled with this different approach to identity. Now, the Blue Horizon proof of concept itself, analyzing data at the edge, is using a software-defined radio. Um, and uh, what we have there is like 50 megabits per second of data. Um, that's easily a volume that you cannot ship from all the Raspberry Pis to the cloud to analyze that. So something has to happen to uh, analyze that data at the edge. This is basically how it looks like, what you can tap into if you have this small antenna and then uh, actually put it up in the United States. And um, this is the spectrum that we're looking at. And it turns out we also have, for example, uh, smart meters in there. Um, but there's also a lot of other stuff. There's aircraft communication in there. The aircraft position um, radio is in there. Um, of course, there's, radio, um, there's this FM in there. So and this is how uh, the smart, smart meter output actually looks. And it turns out, at least in the US, it's not even encrypted. So you can basically read all the smart meter output of all your neighbors, and then you can triangulate who can read <coughs> what output, and then can make pretty good estimates about where what smart meter is located. So <laughs> you can get a pretty good idea in this moment. It's probably not going to stay that way, but this is how it is right now. Another interesting thing you can read is flight data, um, because planes, at least half the planes in the US and uh, most planes in <coughs> Europe are sending their position all the time. And this is how that looks. Now, to set up a marketplace, which is, in the end, what Blue Horizon is about, we have made, uh, in our project, a uh, definition about what personas are taking part in creating this environment. For one, you have the device. And in our proof of concept, this is the Raspberry Pi. But later, it's probably going to be gateways of big industrialized um, uh, players in the space. Then you're going to have the device contract, which is basically what the device, uh, what the device is represented by on the blockchain. <coughs> we have created our own tokens, and the moment we are running this project, not on the Ethereum mainnet, but on a private Ethereum network, and we are creating a token there that we call Bacon. <laughs> and this is what the devices in our proof of concept are basically trading each other's data against. <laughs> So to, um, to bring this token into circulation, we have a central bank, basically. And then we have a device registry, which is where devices go, uh, that want to make part of the marketplace and offer up the data that they can provide. Finally, we have something we call Glensung, which is, in our proof of concept, the consumer of the data, a, an entity that wants to go uh, and buy the right to use the data from the devices. So this is how that looks. I, um, this, this is basically having all the components of all the um, players I just uh, listed. And um, this is, this is uh, something that is uh, basically uh, the, the sequence of what I just showed. I can show you show it again if you want to take a picture. Um, so we, we see the communication between the devices and the individual players in that scheme. In normal prose, what's happening is simply that a device comes, it's offering up what it can do. For that, it registers at the central registry. And then a consumer who wants to <coughs> rent the rights to subscribe to that data comes and takes up on the offer sends over its functionality that is then sent to the <coughs> device as a Docker container 
the device unpacks it and runs it against the data that it provides. And then the high value, low volume data results is sent back to the subscriber. This is something we're working uh, in the moment with a weather company with. IBM just bought the weather company who have this uh, high expertise in how to do exactly this. They're aggregating data, um, huge amounts of, uh, of data at the endpoints to create very short weather forecasts from it. And uh, they're also very excited about what we're doing here and the next generation of what they have uh, under the hood, so to say, is uh, hopefully going to be using Blue Horizon. This is how a map looks that you can participate in right now. This is one of our proof of concepts where we're tracking flight data. And those planes are actually really moving. You can go uh, to the internet right now, go to bluehorizon.network slash map. And you're going to see the planes around those people who are currently taking part in it. You see a plane uh, or two once uh, then uh, in Berlin too. Yes, I don't have as strong an antenna like those guys here in <laughs> San Diego and uh, <coughs> San Francisco. But uh, it's pretty amazing. You can, you, you can really track them until the horizon, it seems. And uh, I even tracked with one of those small antennas that I showed in the beginning. I tracked one uh, until 25 kilometers away, which was really surprising. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of fun. You can also do a network speed test. Um, this is how that looks. Basically, um, the Raspberry Pi tries to connect with networks <coughs> connections nearby, and then you can see how the connection is, uh, how much download and upload speed you have. Um, you can do spectrum analysis. Um, basically, uh, you have the, the full spectrum of, of the antenna and what it can do uh, available. Of course, it makes uh, sense to try to zero in on something that is uh, 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 understandable. So you can have you have this slider that goes through the middle here, this uh, small gray scale that goes there, and uh, with that you can basically zero in on a certain section in the in the spectrum, uh, enlarge it, and then you have uh, down on the left hand side you can basically play the radio that you uh, chose to listen to. And in the moment we're talking about, uh, we can't also uh, perceive TV like that. So mm -hmm. also that little thing there. Finally, we have um, analysis tools um, as part of Blue Horizon. I was specifically tasked with creating a blockchain explorer that also shows um, the dangers of um, what can be done, because on the blockchain, everything's out in the open, at least as we have it today. This is the, the analysis of the private chain that we're actually running, that is our um, private setup. The hope is that we will be able to eventually go on the public Ethereum blockchain. We don't know if that's really gonna happen. This is also not a decision for us to make, it's a business decision. But um, this is uh, the tool I just mentioned where you can actually see different accounts and how they interact in the uh, space of, uh, I think, 50 blocks back so this is a network graph that shows you individual accounts and transactions between the accounts uh, through a certain time range. And of course, this kind of metadata, if you, have, if you can uh, use that and if you have that available at any time, um, gives, gives you a nice potential for surveillance or uh, industrial espionage. So you really have to know um, what use cases can deal with this kind of environment at this point. And going forward, of course, one of our big interests is how um, not only scalability as one important bottleneck, but also private transactions uh, can be realized for the blockchain. Okay, that's for that. Thanks.